What's going on? I'm not sure. People aren't looking like people anymore. I'm so confused. You've got my hair broken. All right. Well, I'm on my way then. From them, there's no, they say we have to go in room 103. Room 103, is it yeah. safe here? Yeah? yeah, that's the evacuation point. Okay. Sergeant Dave, what's really going on? I don't know, but we, I hear about it, but I know what. Oh my gosh, what's stop? That's you, that's Rosie. Who's Rosie? That's the Davis lady from Yui. Rosie, come in, come in, we'll tell you all about it after. Oh, Attack me too. I don't know what's going on. We're evacuating the room 103. Oh my gosh, please, this here. Which room was it again? Room 
Well, um, who are you guys anyway and how did you get the memo? I mean, I know how I got the memo because I am Dr. Roberts, head biochemist at the University of Toronto. And this is Dr. Singh, head lecturer and dean of the Faculty of Medical Sciences at the University of Oxford. So, how did you guys end up here? They say policy is only supposed to be for the teachers. Oh. I get a call from my department saying this is the evacuation room. Oh. And, well, I am a head surgeon at the Mayo Clinic. Oh, you should be sad when you slide it through. Hey, oh, you know me? I am Rosie, the best doubles lady in the whole university. But then let's get all the facts right. Well, I mean, um, everybody has to pick up the other band somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But all right, guys, I'm sensing um, the tension in the room, and you know, we have some work to do. I guess we could put all our skills in the movie to the test, and you know, I think we could already figure out what's going on here. Guys, let's get so to work. Rosie, you're going to eat pharmacy. Before he wasn't walking properly, which is why I was able to escape. <laughs> well, I feel it's no shame because this is obviously an efficiency in the rear cycle. Look how we're going wrong and wrong and have all the cycles wrong. You have to go through all your rear cycle again because obviously you don't know what you're talking about. Obviously. So, the rear cycle. The rear cycle, also known as the onitine cycle, is a conversion of ammonia into urea, which is a major end product. Or in nitrogen metabol metabolism. A buildup in ammonia is toxic and it must be removed from the body. So this is just a summary of what was just said. So the urea cycle consists of five enzymatic steps which aid the body in the formation of urea. The reaction 1 and 2 both occur in the mitochondrial matrix, while the other reaction occur in the cytosol, which is just like gluconeogenesis. In the first reaction, CO2, NA3 and 2 ATP are used to form carbamoyl phosphate, and this is catalyzed by the enzyme called carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1. This is also known as CPS1, which is the most regu regulated enzyme in the urea cycle. The reaction uses 2 ATP to form 2 ADP, hence this reaction is dependent on ATP. In the second reaction, the carbamoyl phosphate form combines with L-ornitine to form L-citrulline, and this is catalyzed by ornitine transcarbamoylase. The L-citrulline will now be transported after this form altered the mitochondrial matrix into the cytosol in order for the third step to occur in the urea cycle. Just a summary of what we just said.
So step three, the synthesis of adenine and succinate. Reaction three to five all occur in the cytosol. The third reaction is catalyzed by adenine and succinate synthesis. This enzyme uses ATP to activate citrulline by forming a citrulline AMP intermediate. This intermediate is attacked by an amino group of an aspartate residue to form adenine and succinate. The third and final molecule of ATP is consumed in this step. This is a summary of what I just said. In the fourth step, there is the cleavage of adenine succinate. The fourth step is catalyzed by adenine succinate elides, which cleaves adenine succinate into fumarate and adenine. Fumarate produced can be hydrated to malate. So, what are you saying? This fumarate form here, this could be used to link the urea cycle to TCA gluconeogenesis? Yeah. yeah. Alright, cool. The fifth step is the formation of urea. This is catalyzed by arginine. Arginine cleaves arginine to produce urea and ornithine, completing the cycle. Arginine can also be activated by cobalt and mang manganese ions. So basically, right, urea cycle is a series of irreversible reactions and using three ATP molecules. But one ATP again converted to AMP and the other two again converted to ADP. So therefore again four high energy phosphate. And the most regulatory enzyme is CPS1, right? Yeah, that's And really this is regulated yeah. by N-acetyl glutamate, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, cool. This is a summary of why that's said. So in the Euro cycle the carbon comes from carbon dioxide and the two nitrogen, one comes from free ammonia and the next one will come from L aspartate. Yeah. Alright, so we do some studies that we exhibited. You think they would happen to be specific to arginine? Because I'm pretty sure that they are. I think so because the symptoms exhibited by adrenal deficiency are all those that were mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And adrenal deficiency is an inherited disorder that causes the amino acid adrenine and ammonia to accumulate gradually in the blood, right? Yeah. yeah. And ammonia, which is which is formed when proteins are broken down in the body, is toxic if the levels become too high. Yeah. So wait, everything is correct, one then. Obviously, it had to be an adenine deficiency. So how come you can figure out all that? And look how we go into the urea cycle like it's nothing. Hmm. And okay. furthermore, this is not an inherited disorder, right? So which means we couldn't get infected? Well, what are we? Hmm. Well, we have to go and tell Dr. Singh about this. Yeah. One thing still in the corner there with her. Day two, Dr. Roberts here. I think Rosie might have enough food just for today, but we're trying our best to find the cure. I mean, I think all of us have some really good ideas, but we're about to evaluate and see what could work. Dr. Roberts, I think Dave has it. All right, let's do this. So Dr. Brown, do you remember how the victim looked during the autopsy? He had um, he had unusual facial features. That was the first thing that dropped out to my body. It just it was weird. But it was so long since I had to you know deal with the Krebs cycle for about five years. I think we should check it out. Oh yes, and the Krebs cycle begins when the two carbon acetyl coa group. But Doc, we only interested in this reaction here. Fumarate, am I right? Yeah, but this is catalyzed by the fumarase enzyme. And if we have a deficiency in this no, enzyme, no, no. listen, uh, if you have a de de deficiency in this enzyme, right, you get a bit of a fumarate in the urine. You get yes, Sergeant Dea, but I couldn't test the urine. You're supposed to be dead. So what is that a symptom of this deficiency? I think it's um, um, a symptom. I think it is um, um, a large enzyme on the spleen. Yeah, being, mm -hmm. You know, I, could, I mean, didn't show any symptoms in, in my liver or spleen, so 
Something that I left behind 